studio in the Joburg studio is Rob Becker, who is the financial director of Sun International, whose numbers were released earlier today. Fully in numbers, uh, that is. Let's have a look at common, some of the financial highlights. So revenue up 10% to just under 10 billion. That's 9.8 billion to be precise. Dividend, nice increase in the dividend. It was 120 cents last year. It's gone up to 150 cents. Adjusted headline earnings per share up 20%. EBITDA up 3% to 2.6 billion. Margins came down. That's a cost story, I think. I'll explore that in a moment uh, with Rob. But uh, Rob, thanks very much for joining us. Um, I suppose if you look at the list of your properties, the list of your businesses in different geographies, sort of catering for so many different uh, types of, of, of people, it's very difficult to generalise and say, how was your year? But let's have a stab at it. How was your year? Thanks, Lindsay. Um, yeah, we, we're very pleased with the, the results for the year. I think on, in the South African market, it continues to be quite a tough market. On the gaming side, we've seen some quite nice traction with some of our units um, achieving some nice revenue growth. On the resort side, it's still quite tough. Um, principally, um, we still have challenges with our international markets. Um, and then our chili business, which is doing very well, um, has helped uh, some of our growth for the year. So that market growing very strongly still, and, and we're still getting some really good traction out of that business. Yes, you do say in your press release you talk about difficult trading conditions, but your numbers have been embraced by uh, the market uh, this morning. Let's start with gaming and let's start with South Africa. As I said, if I look at the list of properties that you have, you've got Grand West and Sun City, Carnival City, Boardwalk, Wild Coast, Sun, and it goes on and on. Is there any particular area, any particular ones that are standing out and any particular ones that are, con are causing concern for you from the gaming side, first of all? Yes, I mean, our biggest property is still Grand West in the Western Cape. Um, had a very good year with 8% growth in, in revenue. Um, so, the, you know, the Western Cape has been a challenge for the last number of years. So, very pleasing to see that coming through. Um, locally, Before you go on, start, Rob, sorry. Rob, before you go on, sorry, that Grand West story, the exclusivity ran out in 2010. What is the, what, what is the situation now with Grand West and, and the future? That's correct. Um, exclusivity did expire um, December 2010. So uh, while we, there's a lot of you know there's a lot of speculation about what the outcome will be, but the the um, Western Cape government has issued draft uh, amendments to the regulations, um, suggesting potentially to allow one of the existing um, Cape licenses to relocate to to the Cape Metropole. Um, Various stakeholders have been offered the opportunity to comment on those draft regulations, which, which we obviously have. We, we've been trying to and, and recently have been successful in engaging with a number of, of the stakeholders and decision makers. And obviously from our point of view, we, we believe it's in the interests of, of the city and the province to retain exclusivity at, in the Western Cape. Um, and obviously we are pursuing that avenue. Yeah, indeed. I mean, if you look at the numbers here, your revenue at Grand West, uh, far and away the biggest contributor revenue-wise to your group, 1.782 billion. So you must be very, very keen to keep um, uh, keep that. Uh, sorry, I interrupted you anyway. Grand West, the jewel in the crown. What else did well? What else did badly? A highlight in, in the South African gaming market was um, Sabaya, our property in um, KwaZulu-Natal, and which grew revenue by 9%. Um, and yeah, very, very nice result there. Um, strong growth in EBITDA as well. Um, we've had some, some good successes in, in cost management in that property. And then I guess on, on the sort of low light side, some of our smaller units, uh, which in the previous year had, had some quite nice growth and uh, on, on growth of around 3% with, with cost pressures quite tough to, to get the EBITDA and not to decline. So. Those are probably the, the low lights in, in the portfolio. You talk about tough, tough trading conditions, and let's just talk again a little bit more generally about people's habits during tough economic times, because despite the fact that certain of the retailers have come out with some really, really good numbers recently, I still think that the South African consumer is becoming pressured. What do people do? Do they, go, um, do they try and drown their sorrows by going having, having a beer and putting some money in slots during tough economic times? Or is there a direct correlation between a slowdown and a slowdown in your revenues, on the gaming side, that is? Yeah, we, we, you know, for many years, um, I think the popular view was that gaming was recession-proof. 
certainly what's happened in South Africa, um, one of the, in our opinion, the reasons retailers have had, had good times is, is they do receive the benefits of government grants and, and, and that end of the market. Our business is more middle to upper income. Um, those customers tend to be more entrepreneurial type of people, so the risk taker. Um, we we finding that um, you know people still look for their entertainment offering, but they can buy they can buy down by by obviously um, either betting less on a machine or or um, you know visiting less times. Um, so what we call footfall, um, you know you'd, you'd come to the casino less times than you would normally do. Right. Um Rob, the hospitality side of things, the hospitality industry under a bit of pressure. Again, it's very difficult to, to say what you've done across the board because of the diversity of your properties. But 61.3 occupancy rate. What interested me, if I stick my head out the window of the studios now, I can see the Table Bay Hotel. Below 50% occupancy. And yet I, I noticed recently numbers coming out from some tourism authority that occupancy rates in places like Johannesburg are actually quite buoyant. Yes, um, if you look at the tourism stats, um, tourism um, up year on year, uh, many of those tourists are, are from Africa. Our, our source markets tend to be from, from um, Europe and the States. Obviously some of the new emerging markets we have uh, representation in, but they're a small base um, and growing off that base. So in a place specifically like the Table Bay, the issues we have is, is we have by far in the five star end of the market the biggest hotel, so we have 320 rooms. So it's a lot harder for us to, to fill, fill that, that, that um, hotel and, and hence it comes through in those occupancy numbers. Uh, talking about the Joburg side of things, you've got uh, the Greyston Hotel, which uh, reading your, the tone of your press release, you seem quite excited about. Yes, we are. Um, we've, we've entered into a 20-year lease on that property. We're busy refurbishing it. Um, it's going to be a modern, contemporary, quite a masculine hotel. Um, we do believe it's going to offer something new and fresh in, in the Johannesburg market, both for the business and leisure traveler. And uh, our strategy has been to have a presence in Johannesburg, in Santon particularly. Um, when we go out to our source markets, to markets, Table Bay, Sun City and the Livingston, we, we have a, a marketing campaign which we call the route of the African Sun. And what we are losing out in that route is a stay in Johannesburg, both on the, on the inbound and the exiting um, of, of the, those three properties. So that certainly gives us the opportunity to take advantage of that. It fits in very nicely, as you say. Yeah, we haven't got much time to talk about the overseas operations. You've got uh, operations in Chile, which you've already mentioned, Zambia, Botswana, Nigeria. But the Chile one is interesting. You've got 69% of the gambling market there. And that, uh, that seems to be going very well for you. Yes, that's the Santiago market. Um, there are two competitors, ourselves and uh, on the south of Santiago and, and a competitor on the north. Um, we have 69% um, of the market, as you rightly say with roughly the same number of gaming positions. So we're doing pretty well there. We're very pleased with the result. The market's still growing strongly and uh, we, we're still expecting to get some nice growth in, in the foreseeable future out of that property. Very brief prospect statement for the group for the next year, please, Rob. Yes, uh, we're seeing some traction in gaming, so we're expecting that to pick up a bit. The hotel side is uh, still challenging, um, but we are hoping to, to um, um, invigorate our sales effort and get some more um, bums in beds as we call it and obviously on the chilly side some good growth so uh, we're cautiously optimistic that um, that we'll uh, you know see out the next year with with um, some reasonable um, results